welcome to Bayside Church Online. So great to have you here with us. And I can't believe we are in person. We're in person <laughs> and I am, you know, going for bright. You are going Absolutely. for bright. Absolutely. So am I. The kids the other day called me the fluoro chick. They were looking for me on the beach and they just went like this apparently. There she is. You are pretty fluoro. Yeah. But more importantly, how have you enjoyed the freedoms in the last week? Well, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. However, by Saturday afternoon, mm. I was like, <laughs> it's too it's too much, too quick. Oh, well, I was a bit like the sozzled bear that you mentioned. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, like so much social interaction all of a sudden and uh, it was a bit much. A bit much too quick. Yeah, bit I've heard, much a, I've too heard quick. a couple of people say that. So I think we just need to prioritise yeah. and take it slow. I actually had a couple of text messages from friends saying, I've got a bit of social anxiety, can you pray? Yes, because it's, really it's a big adjustment, people. particularly yeah. if you've been living in Victoria um, and coming out, all Absolutely. of a sudden these newfound freedoms. And what would it be like in an Italian family or an oh. Irish family with the noise level through the roof? Well, we actually had to brief everybody <laughs> because we did come together on Sunday and we just said, OK, when we come, because we've got two little babies, we said just shh. No elevated pitched voices, which is the normal, the norm in yeah, our household. Yeah, yeah. I think those kids are going to have to get used to that, Sandra. Well, just so they get used to slowly, <laughs> slowly. Fair it's just enough. so we can be kind to each other in the Fair process enough. of adjustment. So wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so so good. We're looking forward to being together in person in a couple of weeks. Um, Vision Weekend, particularly, yeah. we have our first in-person gathering, and so we look forward to being able to meet together and you know just worship together as well but if you've joined us here for the very first time we would love to say hello to you and uh, particularly if if you've never connected with us before right now our hosts in the chat are placing a link if you wouldn't mind just clicking on that link and giving us a couple of your details we'd love to get in touch with you answer any questions about this great faith community and get you plugged in should you want to so, Fantastic. So right now we're going to enter into worship. Pastor Christy, would you like to pray? Absolutely. Anything that we adore, anything that we focus on, anything we spend our time on is actually an act of worship. But at this moment in time, we're going to be singing together. And let's just possess our souls, uh, take this time, let everything else fall off. It mm. will wait. Everything can wait. This is your time right now and this is this is a time for you just to gaze upon Jesus so let me pray for you as we enter into this time of worship father I just thank you that we can come with the angels uh, with the Holy Spirit we can come and worship and adore you and bow our hearts and our minds before you in, in love and Lord I pray that as we worship you would soften our heart you would settle the grind of our heart, Lord God, and you would cause us to be focused on all that matters. Let everything else fall aside, Lord God, and let us be refreshed in the wonder of your, your presence, the wonder of your love mm -hmm. as we worship together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This song is pretty new to us at Bayside and it's called Jaira and Jaira means provider. You might have heard Jehovah Jaira. He it means that Jesus, Jehovah, is our provider. And I want to encourage you today that no matter what your need, the Lord is our provider and you can lean into him. He might not always provide in the way that we think He's going to provide, but He is our provider and you can trust that. So I wouldn't drown You've never been close 
I love that hymn, Great mm. is Thy Faithfulness. I have seen right throughout lockdown and right throughout my life the goodness of God and His mercies are new every morning. They're yeah. bespoke. Uh, what will bless you is different from what will bless me and His faithfulness. He will never leave us or forsake us. What a wonderful God we serve. Yeah. Well, right now, just take a look at the news as we look at what else is coming up in the week and month to come. Hey church, thanks so much for joining us today. Let's see what's happening in the life of our church. Christmas is only two months away. To bring some Christmas cheer, Bayside Community Care will be distributing beautiful Christmas hampers to those in our community who are doing it tough. We are seeking donations of some Christmas goodies, including Christmas pudding, long life custard, minced pies, cranberry sauce, candy canes, and cookies to include in these hampers. Why not pick up an item in your grocery shopping this week and leave it in the yellow bins outside Bayside Church, Cheltenham on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. On Sunday, the 7th of November, join together with Open Doors for the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. There will be a time of prayer as part of our online service on the 6th and 7th of November. Make sure to join us either in person or online for Vision Weekend on the 13th and 14th of November. This will be a fantastic weekend where we will hear from Pastor Rob about the vision for 2022. For more information or to register for anything you've seen here, head to the Bayside Church website or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. So much to look forward to in the life of our church. And you know, in the next couple of months, all these new things that are gonna be opening up Absolutely. So it's real. I think though at the same time when we say all these new things that could sound like, oh my gosh. I know. We've thought long and hard about these things. We've yes. really thought, are these going to bring us what we're looking for? Connection as human beings and connection as a community who love Jesus. Yes. And so not too many those. things. No, so not not too <laughs> many things. You can you can choose the things. Life is like a box of chocolates, right? That, well, that's right. So just pick which chocolate you want to eat. Okay? Absolutely. And don't take the Turkish delight. N oh, no, that's my favourite. It's Rob hits it. So No, I love it. But we're digressing. <laughs> we're now going to continue to worship around a time of giving. And so if you'd like to participate in this time of offering, you can do so in a couple of ways. You can go to the Tithely app and choose Bayside Church Melbourne. Alternatively, you can go to the website and click the giving button or the Bayside Church app. So various ways that you can participate in this time of offering. Now, wouldn't you say, like seriously, the phenomenal job that we've done in the last two years, particularly in Victoria, in thinking about others, in thinking yeah. about the common good. Mm. I was just even thinking about, you know, all the little sacrifices that we have made to ensure that people are well, are kept safe. Mm. You know, we're not thinking just of ourselves. That's right. And and even just going around the local community where people have set up little fun things for children to look at. Yeah. And, Do you remember the spoons? Oh, the spoons everywhere. <laughs> Spoonville. Yeah. And and even, you know, just different ways of doing things that have, have made it. All these little um, libraries have popped up. I don't know if you've noticed Yes. Those. I've actually been thinking about putting one in my own front yard. There so you go. Community libraries. Mm. But, but yeah, just really thinking beyond just yourself. And um, it reminds me of a scripture that I want to share here. It's, it's actually, the context of it is talking about spiritual gifts. Mm. But I think it actually also relates to giving. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, it says in verse 4, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Mm. And I just love that. You know, we've been given by God gifts. And the, those gifts are not just for our own personal benefit and gain. Mm. They are there for the common good. And the same way, uh, God gives us the ability to have finance, to be, to be able to generate that finance. Yes, it is to meet our own needs, to pay those bills, but it's also for the common good. And the common good is, is the ability for us to come together, to worship together. Yeah. And, and also to consider others in our community who may be vulnerable, who, who need help. And so 
as you give today, I want to encourage you that we're giving not just to meet our own needs, but we're giving because we're thinking about the common good. What is going to be a, a blessing for the greater good of our community? That's, that's absolutely wonderful. And, you mm. know, it's just amazing to be able to fill gaps um, recently with the last lockdown, you know, um, within the first week, um, we had referred about 11 people to their GPs for mental health plans and then to find out that psychologists are just booked right up to the hilt. Mm. And then for them to come back and say, you know what, that chat we had on the phone was really helpful and has yeah. really bridged the gap, being heard, being understood. It's so good. And, and also just normat normalising yeah. that everybody is going through stuff at the moment and everybody's excited but apprehensive. Yes, yeah, mixture and of both. It's a very, and, and we're still in that space and mm. let's just be really kind to each other, really kind mm. and part of that kindness is our giving and yes. really compassionate towards one another and mm. and keep exercising the fruits of the spirit. Oh, I'm into that. So let me pray as you give. Father, I thank you that you consider us, you always give towards us. You, you constantly showering us with your goodness and your presence. And Father, as we come right now, we want to not only just consider our own needs, we want to think about others. We want to be compassionate and caring for others and thinking about the common good. So Lord, as we sow right now, we thank you that you are blessing these, these gifts, that they'll go far beyond all that we can hope, think and imagine, and that it will touch people's lives uh, for goodness and for wholeness in your precious son's name. Amen. Thank you as you give. And now we have a very special video from Open Doors. Thank you. In a world facing constant change and challenges, what do you pray for? Over 340 million Christians experience persecution. They face violence, poverty, discrimination and war because of their faith in Jesus. When we, the church, pray as one, the body of Christ is strengthened and the world changes for good. The world needs a united church praying powerfully for peace, unity, healing and hope. Christians in places like Afghanistan, India, China and Iraq need your prayers now more than ever. Will you pray with them? Join us for the International Day of Prayer on the 7th of November to pray powerfully with our persecuted brothers and sisters for the things that change our world and strengthen the church. I don't know about you, but I'm challenged and inspired by that video. And I wrote down the quote that we saw on the screen from Brother Andrew, and it says, if we understood the potential power of our prayers, we would be on our knees a hundred times a day, asking God for things that would turn this world upside down. That hits me like really, really deeply and go, so what do I actually pray for? You know, do I believe in what I'm praying for? And is what I'm praying for things of comfort or, or things that will actually make a difference in the world? Is it praying for more of the love of Jesus in the world? Is it praying for, for more restoration and mercy and grace to be seen in the world? Or are they things that, you know, are superficial things that benefit me? Does it convey a love for God or uh, a, a, and a love for my neighbour or is it something else? And I think that that's something that we can all consider. And particularly as next weekend and particularly next Sunday uh, as Pastor Rob preaches, it's the International Day of Prayer and we'll be hearing uh, a bit of an update from Open Doors Ministry as well as a story from somebody involved in the persecuted church. So I really want you to consider in, in the coming week, like what do we pray for? And is it of worth and significance? I know I've been challenged by that quote. I've been challenged by that whole concept 
uh, in, in reading the quote, seeing the video. Uh, so I, I encourage you to embrace that, but to come ready to, to hear some powerful stories uh, next Sunday, the 7th of November uh, from Open Doors and Pastor Rob. I just want to say a big welcome today. I know that's a bit of a different start, but I wanted to really emphasize that video. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jimmy Day. I'm the men's ministry leader at Bayside Church. It's my privilege to be able to share a little bit of the Word of God with you today. And I hope that you've been enjoying uh, the sunlight. Uh, if you're watching in Melbourne in particular, the ability to get out and about a little bit more now, it's fantastic. Uh, I've been able to to, to duck down over the weekend to Geelong to see my family. And it's been a number of months since I've been able to do that. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing people's faces again uh, I, and, and in person, not on a, on a screen. And so I hope you are too. Uh, and we've timed this well, that you get to look at me like normal. Uh, on Monday, we hit uh, the 1st of November or for those of us like me who do this every year, Movember, so you don't have to deal with the the terrible mo uh, straight off the bat now, but uh, it probably will feature at some point in November, and so I apologise in advance. Uh, today I want to share a little bit that is hopefully powerful. It's something that's really stirred inside of me, and is a word I think that is for for all of us, not just in this season of life, but in every season and it's a good reminder and, and something to reflect upon and uh, I want you to, if you don't have any with you right now, uh, I want you to get a pen and some paper because throughout my message today uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. Somewhere you know, you're going to sit and listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and somewhere you're going to write some stuff down and we're going to sort of process through that at the end of my message. I want today to be a little bit uh, contemplative and really engaging with the presence of God with us. And so my message today is called Divine Interruptions. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that no matter where we are or what we're doing, you are speaking to us and you are moving in and through us. And I thank you for divine interruptions. And I just pray that you would be ministering to each and every one of us today uh, as we look at some of your uh, examples of divine interruptions where you've uh, interacted with people in the past. And I pray that we would all be encouraged and refreshed. And I pray that you would speak your words through me today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Interruptions are a part of life and they usually occur at a pretty inconvenient time. I mean, think about it. Have you ever been sitting down for dinner? Maybe you've just prepared it, put it on your plate, just got to the dining table or the couch, wherever you eat dinner, and then your phone rings. Look, I'm guilty of making calls at that time. I think because I eat dinner at a different time to my grandparents and I talk to them a lot, I have this innate ability of ringing them when they're sitting down for dinner and I know it's an inconvenience or I ring them during the news. Uh, so the two worst times I could ring them. But you think about it, it's an inconvenient interruption a lot of the time when you get a phone call at dinner. Then there's roadworks. I mean, even my drive here today to, to film, uh, I, I didn't factor in that there could be roadworks and got stuck there uh, for a while. It was a good little car karaoke session, but it was an interruption that uh, made me a little bit late for when I was supposed to be here. Or maybe it's when you're watching Netflix or um, another streaming platform and the internet cuts out at a key scene. I don't even have words to communicate that. And if you're like me, you know, and you're really invested in a TV show or a movie and then the buffering starts or the net drops out, it's a shambles, right? It's a major inconvenient interruption. And then maybe the interruption is God calling us to something. And I put that last one there because sometimes interruptions provide us with an opportunity. 
You see, sometimes they're an inconvenience, but sometimes they're an opportunity for something pretty special. If we consider the video that we just watched, what do we pray for? I imagine that often we will pray for God to use us, to give us a, a, an opportunity to, to pray for someone, to share the gospel with friends or family. You know, we, we, we ask God for an opportunity to do something substantial and significant and of worth. Question is, do we really mean that? We may pray it, but do we really want that? And when that interruption comes that, you know, maybe you're on public transport and God says, okay, you want to pray for someone? See that person sitting over there? I want you to go over and start talking to them and to pray for them. Or, you know, you, you want to do something that helps communicate the gospel. Okay, I want you to, to, to serve on this team or I want you to write a devotion and I want you to share that or, you know, I, I want you to be generous in this area. You know, we pray for these things and then an interruption comes. But do we see that as an inconvenience or as an opportunity? Are we prepared for that? Uh, so I've, I've had a few kind of divine interruptions, lots of inconvenient interruptions, um, but a few key divine interruptions in my life. I think back to 2016. Uh, now, for those of you at Bayside who have been around for a little while and know uh, some of what Em and I have done, uh, we were down uh, at the Frankston campus for a period of time uh, pre-COVID. Um, and getting to that point, was a bit of a divine interruption. I'd uh, inquired about a different role at church at that point um, and interviewed for it, knew I wasn't going to get it, was happy doing what I was doing. Um, and you know, you talk about those inconvenience phone calls at dinner time. Uh, I'd literally just sat down to eat my dinner and I get a phone call from uh, Pastor Christy and Pastor Sandra. Uh, and long story short, through that, uh, they encouraged me to consider going down and being a part of the team at the Frankston campus. Now, this was a major interruption. Was it something that I, excited me because I felt I was called into ministry and, and things like that? Absolutely. But was it an interruption? It was a major interruption. It wasn't on my radar. I didn't see that. And then it just was there going, what do you want to do? And I'm going to pick up this story again in a little while after I've shared a little bit more, but sometimes it's, it's a big thing, sometimes it's a small thing, but it doesn't change the fact that it can be an inconvenience, but do we look at it and focus on it as an inconvenience or do we look at it and see an opportunity? You know, I made excuses as to why not, like why I shouldn't do it. The anxiety hit, but I think that that's part of what interruptions do. They challenge us, they disrupt our focus, and they can change the course of our lives. Uh, I look at it in the sense of procrastination. And now, look, I, I would consider myself a PhD level procrastinator. Um, and that's not a good thing. Uh, some people might laugh at that, but it's really not a good thing. I create interruptions for myself when I should be writing an essay or when I should be sermon prepping or doing different things along the way. I create interruptions for myself because it's what I do. And I don't, I don't enjoy it, but it is what it is and I'm learning to, to push through the distraction. But then I end up putting immense pressure on myself to complete what I have to do. And that pressure is self-inflicted. I want you to reflect for a moment on how you feel when interruptions happen. Maybe it's an impromptu phone call. It may not be at dinner time, but it could be any point. Maybe you're given an added task at work that you didn't see coming. 
Maybe something at home has broken and needs repairing and you've got to outlay some, some money towards that. Maybe it's God prompting you to pray for someone. How do these interruptions make you feel? And I want you to be honest with yourself here. How do these interruptions make you feel? You know, you can put that on your piece of paper. When you consider how you feel, look at why it is that you feel that way. Is it because it makes you uncomfortable? Is it because it goes against your plan or your routine? And plans and routines are a good thing. But are you feeling the way you're feeling because it goes against that? I think it's important to identify what makes us feel whatever that is. I look at my story from 2016, that sense of anxiety and stress is because I'm a control freak and I didn't see it coming and it kind of knocked me about because I, I, I didn't see it and then I had to wrap my head around seeing it. And, you know, sometimes it's okay to have an initial reaction of fear and anxiety, but it's then what we do. We don't stay there. We go, okay, where's, where's the good in this? Where's the light in this? Where's the joy in this? So identify what makes you feel whatever it is you feel when an interruption happens. And I want you to write that down in particular, and we're going to return to that shortly. And I want to look at three stories quickly from Scripture that speak to divine interruptions. The first one comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, and it's verses 1 to 10. Uh, and it's the calling of the prophet Samuel. It says, The boy Samuel served the Lord in Eli's presence. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and prophetic visions were not widespread. One day, Eli, whose eyesight was failing, was lying in his usual place. Before the, la the lamp of God had gone out, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. Then the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I didn't call, my son, he replied. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again, for the third time, the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy. He told Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came, stood there and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel responded, speak, for your servant is listening. And I think that that's a, a, a great attitude to have. And now the second story is in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 18 to 22. And this is the call, Jesus calling his first disciples. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, preparing their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. And then the final story is in John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. And this is Mary Magdalene uh, returning to the empty tomb. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she was crying, uh, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. 
They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they've put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it that you are seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said to her. I love these stories, and they are three of many examples of divine interruptions in Scripture. And I want you to consider those moments as if you were there in them. You know, with Samuel, sleep continually being interrupted. You're the disciples out on your boats, just working, and a random person comes and interrupts you at work and tells you to drop what you're doing and follow them. And then Mary, your grieving is interrupted. What would you do in their shoes? And it's a really interesting one to consider. Would we see it as an inconvenience? Would we see it as irrelevant? Or do we see opportunity? And I think that that's the big thing with divine interruptions, even some mundane interruptions, like can you, can you turn that into a positive or an opportunity? And so in 2016, with that phone call that I received, I had to sort of sit there and, and, and make a decision. I was able to, to, to call a friend and, and, and chat to them about it. And, you know, I felt completely out of my depth. I may have conveyed that whole duck on a pond mentality that looked all calm and everything on top of the surface of the water, uh, but underneath the legs are going a million miles an hour um, and, and anxious about it. But it was just like, okay, this is a challenge. It's a bit inconvenient, but I'm going to see this as an opportunity to learn and grow. And I'm incredibly grateful to God and to Pastor Rob and Pastor Christy for that opportunity to learn and grow. And it's brought me here to where I am today. And if we look at those three stories that we read with Samuel, here I am, you called me. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Are we ready and willing when a divine interruption comes to, to run to God and go, here I am, I am listening, speak, Lord. We've got the disciples who gave up their livelihood and their families and followed Jesus. And you've got Mary who was grieving, was in shock, was probably a little bit angry. And annoyed but then all of a sudden Jesus just interrupts that and then there's awe there is joy and her faith is spurred on interruptions happen church and the thing is we choose how we deal with them do we react on emotion or do we respond with understanding and, and consideration. God is always speaking. Are we hearing? Are we listening? And I can consider one of the, the, the key things to dealing with divine interruptions is knowing the one who is speaking or who is interrupting. And so when it is a divine interruption and God is speaking to us or calling to us, we need to ensure that we know his voice, but also that we know his nature and his character so that we can trust what he is calling us to, but then have a strong enough faith that we are willing to uh, 
look past the immediacy, the, the, the physical, tangible things in front of us and to walk in faith and in obedience to what He calls us to. It is essential to deepen our relationship with our Heavenly Father, to pray to Him, to read the Word, because then when divine interruptions come, we can hopefully respond with obedience, an act of worship to our King. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the divine interruptions that may occur in our lives. And I just pray right now that you would help us to, uh, to, to engage with you and when those interruptions come, to see them as an opportunity rather than an inconvenience. And in this space right now, I want you to consider what you've written down. Consider your typical responses to an interruption. I want you to be honest with yourself and, and with God. There's, there's no judgment, no condemnation. This is a growth opportunity for all of us. And I'm speaking to myself as much as anyone. Consider what you have written down. While you do that, why don't you close your eyes for a second and take a couple of deep breaths. Just silence that noise around you and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what might cause you to feel that way when you're interrupted. Let the Holy Spirit fill you with peace that surpasses all understanding. And in that space of peace, find that clarity to, to understand the reaction and how we can, we can grow the next time there is a divine interruption. I want to look at Romans 8, verse 28, right now, as we're in this space. And it said, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Read what you wrote down again in light of Romans 8, 28. That God works all things together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So if we know that, we believe that, we understand that, when an interruption comes, we know that it is according to his purpose. And right now, just ask the Lord to show you how you can deepen your relationship with him and to trust his interruptions when they occur. I want you to write that down. And if you're tuning in and maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want to make uh, that declaration, you want to take that step and go, you know what, Jesus, I am thankful for what you did for me. If that's you, there's a link in the chat and you can, you can click on that and someone will engage with you and, and chat with you. And we want to pray with you. And so you can say this prayer uh, along where you are right now and go, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. For that interruption of the established norm when you shed your blood for me. Today, I choose to follow you. I repent and turn from my selfish ways and choose to live for you forevermore. Father God, I, I just thank you for, for who you are. I thank you that you are faithful that you are our provider 
and that you are with us wherever we go. And so right now, Lord, I just pray your blessing and favour upon all of Bayside Church and everyone who is watching this, Lord God. Just fill us with your peace, fill us with your love uh, and provide us with some divine interruptions where we can uh, share your love and your goodness to the world around us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, I hope you're feeling encouraged, church. And while we're in this space, I'm going to hand back to the worship team as they continue to lead us in song.
wonderful that in that song, the goodness of God, we can see the goodness of God sprinkled throughout our entire day, even in those interruptions that may at first just make us a little bit irritable. But then when we lean in, we see that we have actually been a vessel to show kindness, to show love, to really listen and to really pay attention. I love it when I say to God, you know, do with me what you will. Mm. And then he does. And then we start to show some resistance. Oh, yeah. So I want to lean in um, this week particularly. want to lean in. want to listen to the spirit. Uh, and I want to want to really just be curious about what he's up to. It's so good because, um, you know, I was even mindful of this in the past couple of weeks where, because I'm a bit of a planner and you know that oh, about me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so actually letting go of your plans and seeing those interruptions from God, but actually mm. paying attention to the feeling of being interrupted. And if mm. I had to be honest, it's that feeling of resentment. I don't want my plan to be up interrupted and then what am I saying I'm resenting you God because you're interrupting my day yeah, or maybe you're saying <laughs> that I had I had a better plan for my day than correct you had. and it Ooh. never works that way does it no it doesn't no. so it is trusting and letting go it's, it's interesting you said one of the things in Ireland is people just drop in and uh, my grandmother used to say she knew a friend who went to the door with a coat on if she liked you She'd be, oh, I've just got home. If she didn't like you, oh, I'm terribly sorry, I'm just going out. But I've often found that it's the people who just drop in mm. um, those interruptions that actually just lift you out of wherever it is that, that so you it's were. Almost so serendipitous Serendipitous, mo moments. I like that word. It's a good Very word. Nice. It's a good word. Well, we hope you've been so blessed by uh, today's service and that you feel refreshed and ready to just embrace the day ahead. And so we really thank you for joining us. We've got connect groups during the week, of course. Uh, please register for Vision Weekend. You can go to our website if you want to be face to face. We'd love for you to do that. And Pastor Christy, so great to be hosting here here today. I and know, Isn't doing it this fun? together. Isn't it fun? We've had fun, so I hope you've had fun too. Yeah. So have a great one, and see you next time. Ciao.